everyone, it's Mark and Julie from RV Love, and today we're taking a Class B van out for a test drive. Stay tuned. We didn't get to just take it for a drive, we also got to spend the night and try it on for size over a period of about 24 hours. In this video, we share our experience. So we're here in Connecticut and we were able to borrow our friend's Airstream Interstate Class B van and we'll see what it's like to drive around in these twisty small roads and run errands in a motorhome here in Connecticut. This is the 2018 Airstream Interstate Grand Tour EXT floor plan with high gloss hardwood cabinetry and a workstation area built in behind the driver's seat. We'll share more of the interior toward the end of this video but for now let's take this baby for a spin and let you know what we think. Alright here we go. Okay. He said those <laughs> <laughs> so what we're driving today is a 2018 Airstream Interstate on the 3500 chassis. It's about 24 feet long and I'll tell you what, this thing drives dreamy so far. I love that it's so much narrower. I feel like I can do a slalom course down the center of a lane instead of just being squeezed in it. But I'm on one of the bigger roads around here now. We'll go on some smaller, twisty, curvy roads in a little bit. Uh, something I would never dream of driving on in our 40 foot long diesel motor home. So yes, we are here in Connecticut for a few days visiting friends and they have this awesome Airstream Interstate that they recently bought and uh, this is actually second RV for them. They also have a Class A motorhome that uh, they full-timed in but now that they're uh, doing some part-time RVing, they're finding that they need something smaller and more nimble to get around here up in the northeast and as you will see from the roads here, it's much easier to drive around in a smaller RV than a bigger one. But uh, he has business meetings in the city, occasionally will stay overnight uh, if he's got another meeting the next day so yeah so this has been an addition to their RV uh, fleet I guess you know it's really interesting how much class B's have been showing up in our world lately and uh, we love our class A 40 foot motorhome love the livability especially since we've done our remodel uh, so we don't have any plans on selling that anytime soon but we're definitely interested in curious I think that's what we would call ourselves is van curious or class B curious or smaller RV curious maybe and we just kind of wanted to try a few on for size and just uh, just see what they like and see what it's like to drive around in something small. I don't think I could full time in something as small as this, but we do have friends that do full time in small vans. But yeah, this is fun. This is fun, something different for sure. have some errands to run today. I've already had a here appointment and now we are uh, taking this down to just get a few things, do a bit of shopping this afternoon and see how we go on these roads, uh, parking in parking lots, see how it drives. We do love motorhomes. Uh, we love the ability to be able to have everything in the house with us as we're driving. So you might be wondering where we are. We are actually uh, in Connecticut around the um, Monroe Trumbull Fairfield area, uh, that's where we're driving today. Uh, quite a nice day, actually. It's, it's yeah. no vehicles big. So okay, no commercial vehicles. Take over eight feet tall. There are a lot of low bridges around here. I think we just passed a turnoff where that had an eight foot height bridge. We've noticed a lot of those around here in the Northeast. That is definitely one of the challenges driving around this area, is being really mindful of the height of your RV or any vehicle that you're driving. Um, but the good news about driving a vehicle like this that's so small and nimble is that if you end up in a situation, you can just turn around, chuck a U-turn or make a quick turn to get out of there because there's so many other options than you have when you're driving a big coach, especially when you're towing. So at 10 feet tall and at 24 feet long, it's definitely larger than your regular car. So there is still some adjustment, but I feel like this would be a very easy adjustment from virtually anyone who's used to driving an everyday car to driving this as a motorhome. Um, but parking lots are a little tricky because most parking spaces 
are only about 19 or 20 feet long. So this is going to be longer than any parking space. So you're going to have to find a parking space that you can back up over the back of it. So because you're too long for most spaces, or maybe taking two spaces if you're at a, gro at a grocery store or someplace that has a long two spaces together, you can just take up two. When we drive our regular RV, we take up a lot of spaces, probably six spaces if we're trying to park our coach because it's so hard to maneuver in those areas. Of course, for those of you that are, uh, may not be familiar with our channel and our full-time motorhome that we travel in, it's a 40-foot Class A motorhome and we tow a Jeep Cherokee. Uh, we're about 60 feet all up with the motorhome and with the towed. Uh, so yeah, this is definitely, definitely a big change. But of course, there's not as much livability in this as there is in a big Class A motorhome either. And we're not as concerned about you know, what it would be like to park in a single car parking space, which I know is a big consideration for a lot of people looking for a van or a smaller RV. It's not a big deal for us. We're just so used to driving around in our motorhome with everything with us that I think I've become a bit spoiled. So I definitely like the idea that we've got a bathroom on board, we've got a fridge, kitchen, snacks. I think I could get used to this. <laughs> how about you? I definitely think I could get used to how easy this is to drive. <laughs> Hello. So there's a bridge, 9 foot 11. We are not taking that. <laughs> um, especially with our friend's RV. So you can see here that I'm backed up over the end of this parking space. And what you can often do is park up over a grassy area in a parking lot, but just be careful because in this coach right here is the propane fill just behind the rear duals. And it's kind of low to the ground, so you can only back up so far without risking hitting that. So I'm going to measure with my hand how deep I can go with the parking block. See, we could park over this grassy area in the parking lot and let it hang over that because this parking block is much lower than the clearance I have at the back of the RV. It's getting dark. We're just about finished our test drive of this Mercedes Sprinter van. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to drive it. I was hoping to, but... We had some errands to run and now we have to get back and we've got a party to get to and so I just don't want to have to rush my test drive. Pedals might be a bit of a reach for you, but the ergonomics and sitting in here and the steering wheel, everything's a very simple reach for you. I think you'd really enjoy driving something like this. So if we rent a Class B Plus or a C, as long as it's on this same Mercedes Sprinter chassis, it's going to be very similar for you to drive. And that's a good point because we are going to be renting an RV here very, very soon and I will get a chance to drive that. So that's a good point that it'll, it'll feel very similar. What do you think, Mark? Well, I love it. I love the maneuverability of this B van and I love being able to be able to park in an actual parking space as long as I have a little space for an overhang. That's a huge benefit having it so narrow to be able to pull off the parking thing. So, so far I'm really excited about this, but I'm excited to be able to look at some other ones too and see how they compare. Okay, we're back, so that's the end of our test drive. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we can uh, sleep in here for the night and just experience that, because I think it would be great to see how that bed is. What's it like sleeping in an RV where you're having to like put the bed up and down all the time, as opposed to having a dedicated bed? Because I think that could be something that gets old if you're doing extended travel. Yep. Okay. <laughs> all right so we're in our friend's van and uh we're back from our party and we can stay the night here it's normally about 20 degrees at night but tonight it's is unseasonably really warm what is it like 
50, it's like 59 or something like that. It's crazy really little. warm. And so we're, it'd be a good opportunity to give this a try. Yeah, so we are plugged in. We're not boondocking. Uh, we're plugged in beside their house. And uh, so we're just gonna give this a try and put this bed together. We've never done this before. He's not shown us how to do it. We did see Christine and Aaron do that in their van. So we're gonna uh, give this a try and see how we go. Just overnighting, we completely haven't packed properly or anything. We just grabbed a few toiletry items. So uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm really curious to see how comfortable this bed is going to be, this sofa that uh, folds down to the bed yeah. and uh, see whether or not that's something we can at least it gives us, it's only one night, but at least it gives us a little taste of what it's like to live in this. So with the bed, with the well, convertible to stay bed. In it, not yeah, to travel in it, not yeah. to live in it. Yeah. yeah. Well, living Not planning on living in a van. Yeah. Okay. So, um, all right, let's, let's get the bed sorted. Do you know what to do? I believe what happens is you push a button and it reclines the bed. So far, there's a remote control button. I'm sure there's a system, we just don't know what it is yet. Yeah, we don't know what the proper procedure is. <laughs> okay. Oh, someone left their watch. Here's the problem with the convertible bed that I see first, is that there's this nice big area here and luckily, at my height, I can I can lay here almost. My head kind of hits, so I can't quite lay this way. Julie could, but I can't. If I lay on my side, I'm pretty comfy laying this way. This is nice, and this is pretty consistent. But if I lay, if I'm taller, I have to go this way, and it's nice and long. But you have some inconsistency. It goes dip here, and here's more trouble because. This wooden thing that divides is the side of these chairs that drop down. This is right there. And so if I'm laying on it, it's hitting me right on the side of my leg. Um, I'm, I got a feeling that's gonna get a little uncomfortable. But our friend's solution to that is he has these big rolls He would put out and that would help give you additional cushion and make the whole bed surface more consistent oh yeah that absolutely takes away the bump and makes the bed feel like a more consistent surface so <clears throat> that definitely works for that there's two of these so it fills this whole area Makes for a very large bed area. Yeah, the pillows look nice and decorative, but then you got some more things you gotta move every time you try and set up. So these beds, these little rolls make it far more comfortable, but also using up the probably the biggest storage area in the entire RV. This pillow and a sheet and a blanket. And Julie will fend for herself. <laughs> Good night. That's not the side you sleep on. That's my side. <laughs> oh, whoops. I guess I've set up Julie's bed. <laughs> I guess I got to fend for myself. <laughs> we just tried. We just squeezed past each other in the hallway and it is very squeezy. It's really squeezy for two people. I think this would be super easy for one, but for two people for any length of time, I mean, yeah, you, you would just get used to it, but we just, we've just come in here completely disorganized and winging it. So I'm gonna go and brush my teeth and clean my makeup off and everything. It's a wet bath in here. Come and have a look. So I don't know how easy it is for you to stay in here. I'm not gonna have a shower tonight. I'll we'll do that in the morning. But um, yeah, it's a little, oh, oh, there's the, you hear the water pump? So I'm gonna brush my teeth and get rid of my, remove my makeup, etc. But yeah, it's uh, compact. <laughs>
I was in there earlier and I had the door shut, I was pretending I was gonna shower and it's it's definitely snug. a little snug. But you don't wanna spend a ton of real estate on an area you're gonna spend very little time in. That's true. So being a relatively new couch, this has multiplex wiring, it has a central control pad for everything in the house, all the lights and the water tanks and everything, day and night shades, the lighting, the furnace. We're gonna set that tonight because we're plugged in. We'll just set that at 62. Put the shades down, nighttime. We'll do night master, that'll do all the shades at once. Night master, ready? Oh wow, look at that. That's cool. That is pretty nice, I have to admit. I think I must be a little impatient because I'm already just going, man, this is gonna get old doing this every single day. So, but this is good. This is what, this is a great experience because, you know, if we do end up getting something uh, smaller, maybe just having a dedicated bed might be a better fit, but you know, we're just trying it off a size. So now that we've got this bed made, it's actually pretty big. It's about the size of a king. So uh, I guess a uh, proof will be sleeping tonight and seeing how we go in the morning, but uh, I'm ready for bed. So pretty cozy. Yeah. Night mode activated. Can you turn the lights off, please? So, oh, babe, how'd you sleep? <laughs> I slept, I actually slept pretty well. I really wish you wouldn't just be interviewing my ass right now. <laughs> 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 What's it like putting that bed away? Uh, this is taking some effort and some time to pack down these rolls tight enough to fit up in this cupboard. The big picture doesn't sound like a lot to take a few minutes to set up the bed and a few minutes to take down the bed. But if you were doing this every day for months, it might get old. Maybe we're like just that. lightweights because we're spoiled. Nothing. We're spoiled, I guess. <laughs> Temperature was comfortable and the surface was comfortable with these bed rolls but these bedrolls take a lot more effort to pack away. So I'm just getting started. I still have the other one and I still have the sheets and then I gotta put the bed back. But, but I'm a newbie, I'd get more efficient at it, of course. Well, I have to say I slept better than I expected that I would. A little bit stiff this morning, but I think it is definitely squeezy for two people. If I was living solo in a van, I probably wouldn't even bother making the bed up at night. I'd probably just slip like this, but I am smaller than your average person, and so it's kind of narrow. It's fine for me, but um, it may not be so good for regular sized people. Nice. definitely like this big screen wall and I like how this screen door is built in. It's, it's just really nice to be doing dishes with the full floor to ceiling view. These drawer space in this kitchen is huge. Plus you have space above. So I'm very impressed with how much storage space you have in it. And this fridge is massive for the size of the RV. And it has a freezer drawer as well. Big one. Clothes closet. And this is the only one. The rest of your clothes would have to be folded. The drawers are super long though. You definitely pack a lot of storage into this little RV. And these are super nice. These are window covers and they just stick into the window with magnets for nighttime privacy. Really pretty cool. So what do we think of this Airstream Interstate van? We loved how it drove, fun and easy to drive and to park. We like the size of the van, even the fuel economy, and it could be used as a daily driver. It drives well, stealthy, convenient and nimble. Aesthetics were beautiful inside and out with quality fit and finish that Airstream is known for. 
practical with amazing utilization of space and cavernous storage for such a small RV. It's really well thought out. We really liked it, but for our personal needs with the potential of extended travel of 30 days or more at a time, we felt it wasn't quite the right fit for us. We like a little more space. We're not really a fan of having to make the bed up and down every day in the time that takes, not excited by a wet bath, and in general prefer a little bit more space to move around. Still great for solos, for traveling couples who are very compatible, or for those looking for a fun, short getaway vehicle, or also someone who is looking for longer trips to transport you between destinations. But at the end of the day, it's all personal choice and what feels right for you and your needs. We love the Airstream Interstate, but we're continuing our search. Thanks so much to our awesome friends for letting us borrow the van, stay overnight, and have a great time up in Connecticut. We're going to continue searching, shopping, looking for smaller RVs. We are interested to think about the possibility of expanding our RV experience and maybe adding another one to our fleet. <laughs> um, but yeah, no boats for us, no boats. We are RV people, we are drivers, and... Um, there are a lot of other options out there, whether it's van, class Bs, or what is often called a B plus, or it's class Cs. And some people get a little worked up about the terminology there, but wide body Bs are often known as a B plus. And it's kind of just, a lot of people call them that. So whatever you call it, we're gonna try out a few more RVs coming up here in the next few weeks at the Tampa RV Super Show. We won't be driving them there, of course, but we'll be doing some tours and looking around, sharing that experience with you. And uh, also we'll be driving our rental RVs, which are smaller and just see how that experience goes. Look forward to sharing that with you guys. So thanks for coming along for the drive today with us in this Mercedes Sprinter uh, van. But thanks so much for watching and we'll see, see you on, on the, the road. road. Yeah, so at four foot eight, I am travel sized. So uh, I quite like that. Don't you like having a portable compact wire? I do. <laughs> you can take her anywhere. <laughs>